we have people bring us guitars all the time that are frankly just in such a state of disrepair that they either can't afford to fix them or in some cases they're not really salvageable. And these are incredible old guitars, you know, 1910, 1930, 1880, whatever the case may be. Sometimes we'll buy these guitars from them and because the back and the side wood are still fantastic, there's nothing wrong with it. So you have this beautiful Brazilian back and side. Maybe the neck is still intact, but the fingerboard's messed up or whatever the case may be. And we're like, if we fix this guitar up, what can we do with it? So we'll take that guitar and we'll put a new top on it. We'll do all the work and we'll refurbish it, rebuild it from the inside out, preserving what's really valuable about the guitar in terms of the wood, the front block. You want that hand stamp serial number on the guitar. And we'll make it, frankly, like new, uh, like it would have appeared from the factory at the time it was originally built. There it is. So this is a conversion that we've uh, just recently completed. Originally it was a double O, 1930 double O. Obviously needed a lot of work when we, when we received the guitar. We've replaced the top on it, we've replaced the fingerboard. But the back and sides and the neck are all original. It's a 1930. You see the Brazilian rosewood, straight grain Brazilian on there. That is old growth stuff, buddy. You don't see that anymore. Use our vintage uh, lacquer finish on it, like, like we do with our authentics bar frets like it originally came. We've redone this in a 42 style on the top, which I think looks perfect for this kind of 12 fret double O. Technically now, I think it would be uh, a double O 42 because it's a 42 style pearl on top. So yeah, that's where the word conversion comes in. We sort of converted it from one style to another style. You know, these guitars are done exclusively in our customer repair department. So we have some super high level craftspeople who are used to working on old guitars. It's a really different skill set than working on new product that's coming through. Shaping braces or, or replacing necks or neck fitting on a new guitar is not the same as pulling or steaming out an old neck like this, trying to preserve the back and the side and then taking it all apart and putting it all back together and trying to save everything. That's, that's, a, that's a different level of craftsperson who specializes in that. And we have a whole department, that's all they do. Everything's done by hand. Like you're measuring with a ruler, you're, you know, nothing's going on in the machine. I mean, even polish it. It's like we don't, we don't let it go out on the manufacturing floor. These things might be warped and everything back then was a lot thinner. So things are just more fragile. You know, the wood's old, it's a little more brittle. When we do these older conversions, everything's done by hand. But if you, like if you look back in the day from 1899 to 1900, I mean, look, at there's only what 400, less than 400 made in a year. So you can see like how much time is spent just to do one. So imagine that's how much time they spent on one all the time. That's why they, you know, it just wasn't fast. And that's what makes them cool and unique too. And we try to stay true to the tradition of how we did the things back in the day. I like working on the old stuff, man. It's a challenge. Kind of bring some of them back to life and make them new again and kind of shine and be awesome. Give it a new life, you know, as a new beginning. The disassembly, the cleanup work, that has to take place. You're starting a new top, you're inlaying the pearl, the bar frets. Bar fretting here is a lost art. We have a couple people in the building who know how to do bar frets. We try to keep those skill sets alive, the high glue, real lacquer, this sort of satin finish. It's not even satin, it's not gloss. We were trying to figure out how did they make these old guitars look the way they look because they were shiny, but they weren't today's kind of shiny. It was different and we, really had a hard time figuring it out. And we said, oh, people just taking steel wool. What were they doing? Jeff Allen, who was running the custom shop for us, who's now in charge of production here, found it in the archive that one of our managers was writing uh, a vendor. And in that, he described the finishing process and how they did it and how they achieved that look. And it just laid it out like a recipe. And we took it and we did it. And it was perfect. So we replicate that look with the original formula. A single craftsperson sitting at a desk, hand shaping or hand fretting an instrument like this or doing the polish process that we do is exactly the same as the person who was here in 1930 down at the original factory, which is just down around this corner, sitting at a bench very similar, doing the exact same thing. There's no compromise involved in that. You either know how to do it or you don't. And those who don't make other guitars. 
It's so cool that you can get a guitar from 1930 that's in this kind of condition, factory condition. This is not some guy in his garage refinishing stuff with a rattle can. This is all Martin work, all Martin parts, back to the home where it started. For somebody to be able to own it and enjoy it for a lifetime, that's stuff you can't buy anymore. This is the only place you can do something like that. I don't want to see these old guitars just get tossed. This reclamation project, I think, is worthy. I think guitar players are excited about it, and I understand they're rare, I understand they're expensive, I get it. But all things of value and beauty are rare and expensive by definition, and this is no different than that. So I hope we get to do a lot more of them, but we'll see. Thank you.